The fan quilt block was originally made using templates, but today I'm going to show you a method of making this block that doesn't use templates or specialty rulers. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So a fan is a traditional quilt block that's been around for a long time. And originally it was made with templates that give this unusual shape. And then eventually specialty rulers were brought in for people to do rotary cutting. But today I'm gonna to show you a method for making this block that doesn't use either of those. It just uses your regular rotary cutter and ruler that you already have. So let's make a fan block in a non-traditional way. So to make this easy fan block, you're going to need a 12 and a half inch piece of background fabric. So that can be whatever color you want, but I'm using this light piece. Then for the blades of the fan, you're going to need nine pieces that are two and a half inches by seven and a half inches. Now I have two different colors, five of one and four of the other, and I'm going to alternate those, but you can use whatever combination you want. You can have them all the same. You can have them all different. Um, it's whatever you want, but you'll need nine in total. And then you're going to need a three and a half inch square of um, contrasting fabric and that's going to be the base of the fan and then besides that you're going to need a ten and a half inch square of paper backed fusible web so to get started we're going to use our blade pieces because we're not using a template we are going to need to trim these using our ruler and our rotary cutter so this is how you're going to trim the blades for the fan on one end of the blade, you're going to mark in three quarters of an inch. So we're measuring three quarters of an inch, marking that spot, and then do the same thing on the other side. Three quarters and mark that. Now you can double check, but there should be one inch between those two points. And then you can either mark this line with a pen first and then cut, or you can just cut with your rotary cutter, but we're cutting from this point up to that corner. And then from this point up to the other corner. So that is what your blade is going to look like. Now, if you are feeling really confident, you can mark just one side on the back of the fabric. There's my three quarters. And then fold this piece in half. and then cut both sides at the same time because they are a mirror image of each other. And that will give you the same result. Just make sure that you cut the side away from the fold and don't cut on the folded side. So you're gonna cut all the blades the same way. So once all the blades have been cut, we're just going to sew them together with a quarter inch seam in whatever order you decide. So now that all these blades have been joined, we have this part that is clearly starting to look like a fan. So now we're going to take our fusible web and we're going to mark the curve onto there. And we want a curve that's about um, 10, 10 and a quarter inches and it's a quarter circle. So if you have a really big platter that is big enough, you could do that. Or if you want to use a um, 
compass if you have a compass that's large enough but I'm going to show you how to do that even if you don't have either of those items. So grab your ruler and a pencil and we're just going to start marking lines and I'm going to go with uh, 10 inch lines just because it's easier to see the 10 inch piece but you could do anything between 10 and 10 and a quarter and so just mark a bunch of points that are all 10 inches from that corner And then once those points are marked, we can just fill in a curve between them. And if it's too much space, you can just go back and add a few more points if it's too much space to get the curve. There we have our curve and you can clean it up at this point if you want to make it smoother. But once you're happy with it, then that's what we're going to use. When you're happy with the curve, we're going to cut this out, but don't cut directly on the line. We're going to cut leaving about half an inch away from the line on either side. And you might want to leave a half, three quarters of an inch on the that smaller side of the line, the inside. And this doesn't have to be perfect cutting. You don't have to measure everything. We're just doing a rough cut at this point. And then put the rest of our fusible web to one side because we are gonna need some of that again later. And then on the back of our piece, we're going to fuse this line. So you'll notice right away that the curve doesn't go right from edge to edge. And that is because this angle is greater than 90 degrees, but we're going to be trimming it down to 90 degrees. So you want to kind of center the line. So you want to center your line on your piece so there will be a little bit of fabric left on um, both sides of it. And then um, take it to the iron and fuse this down. So now I have this fused. You can see it goes right up close to the edge. Um, but it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the fabric. So now I'm going to cut that out right on the line that we drew. And in this section where I'm starting, I'm just going to cut as if the line went all the way to the edge of the fabric. So this now gives us a really smooth line. And it also means when we're joining the blades of our fan, we don't need to worry about them lining up perfectly because now it's perfectly smooth. And we're gonna fuse this onto our background fabric. And because our piece is a bit bigger, then you can see it's gonna overhang. So we're just going to um, center it on the background fabric and you can use the um, edge of the fusible web to help you line it up. So we'll take off the paper and then align this and then we can fuse that right onto the background. So when it's fused on, you can see it overhangs the edge of the block a little bit, 
but it's on there and the fusible web is holding it secure. So now we're gonna take our fusible web piece again, and this time in the corner, we're gonna mark a, a three or three and a quarter inch um, quarter circle. And so you can either do that the same way we did the other one by making a bunch of points and then doing a little dot to dot, or if you have a curve, um, like a plate, or I have this from an embroidery hoop, we can use that. And I'll just check that on the block. Yeah, that looks like it'll work as a good curve. So I'm just gonna mark that. And then just like before, we're gonna cut not on the line, but just a little bit away from the line. And then I'm gonna cut away a chunk from the middle as well, just so it's not so much um, fusible web. And then these little pieces of fusible web that we have left over, hang on to those, because those are great for using for um, wool applique or any little pieces. You can check out my other video about saving all your little pieces of fusible web. And now we're gonna fuse this onto our square that we have. And you can see this one should um, line up pretty well. So we are gonna fuse that onto there. So once that is fused on, then we're going to cut that out right on the line this time. And then we can peel off the paper And then we'll fuse that right onto the corner of the block. So we can use the corner of the fabric to help align it. So once everything's fused on, you can see the block is starting to look finished, but we're just gonna trim the edges of these blades so that aligns with the 12 and a half inch block and then you have another option once you've trimmed that if you don't want to have all these layers of fabric you could also trim away the background fabric because we only fuse it along the edge so you could trim a bunch of that away to remove some of the excess bulk so I'm going to trim these sides with my rotary cutter and ruler but the inside I would trim with scissors and don't trim it too short, leave enough there for it to hold on to, but you can just trim away some of this excess. So once everything is trimmed, then your block is pretty much done. Now you'll probably want to go back and add some kind of stitching just to secure the edges that you fuse, this top edge and this edge. And you can use decorative machine stitching, you could use just a straight line of stitching, you can do hand stitching. There's lots of different uh, variations and options that you can do. So have fun playing with that. This block is fun in a quilt, either square or on point. I hope you've enjoyed this traditional fan block made in a non-traditional manner. For more quilt block tutorials, quilting tips and tricks, be sure to check out ebitastudio.com.